is Ronald Garnett. Welcome to Your Financial Solutions. We have a great show for you today. Please stay tuned. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Sergeant Michelle Garcia served meritoriously in Iraq and has the medals to prove it. Soon after leaving the Navy, Lieutenant Chris Scott found a job, a home, and started a family of his own. Corpsman Richard Stokely took the skills he learned in Vietnam and put them to good use as a paramedic. But soon after leaving the military, each of these veterans fell on hard times and faced homelessness. Even after Michelle lost all her savings, even after Chris wasn't able to pay his mortgage, and even after Richard battled alcoholism for years, they each reached out for help when they needed it most. A simple phone call put them in touch with a trained professional from the Department of Veterans Affairs. That call got Michelle a place to stay until she could afford one of her own, put Chris in touch with employment assistance, and found Richard a substance abuse program. These veterans are success stories not only for how they were able to help others while serving their country, but for how they were able to let others help them. If you know of or are a veteran in need, make the call. Fancy Pants Peanut Butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice, where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. We're back with our special edition show. We have for you our guest, the Honorable Hardy Davis, Mayor of Augusta. Welcome, Mayor. Thanks, Dr. Garnett. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, I'm very honored to have you here, too. As you know, this show deals with financial solutions and employment and business opportunities. And as the mayor, I know that's a priority for you. Uh, can you just give us a basic outline of the city's position on stimulating, you know, mm -hmm. jobs for the Augusta area? Certainly. I think, you know, one of the statements that I've made uh, over the last two years, our third year now, is that Augusta has moved beyond a place of being called potential to a place of endless opportunities mm -hmm. for everyone. Uh, as a city, we're open for business, whether that be small businesses who are starting here, whether that be businesses that are expanding their operations. It's not just the major manufacturers. It's certainly cyber innovation and technology opportunities that exist in our community today. But it's those small business owners. I mean, I think when you look at the economy of the U.S., we know that what drives that are small businesses. And in our community today, there are endless opportunities to not only engage whether it be local government, uh, the school system, uh, but in the private sector as well. There are vast opportunities for people to uh, make money, to whether it's a product, a widget, an app. Uh, this is the unique opportunity for our community to move beyond 
what historically has been a 3M economy, medicine, manufacturing, and the military, to one of innovation and technology. Well, that's, that's very interesting because I have um, done studies, and last time I looked, I think over 64 percent of all new jobs are created by small businesses. That's correct. I think when you look at statistics, uh, again, whether it's U.S. Commerce Department, NFIB, uh, those are organizations that certainly are at the forefront of small businesses, uh, the U.S. Small Business Administration as well. And so we know that that's the bedrock of America's economy. It's small businesses. It's those organizations that 10, 15, 20 employees that ultimately grow, and they've got 100, 250 mm -hmm. employees. But it's those small businesses that really make communities thrive and grow. And Augusta's seen her fair share of that. Uh, but now that we've stepped into this new dimension of cyber, cybersecurity, mm -hmm. cyber technology, it creates a whole new wave of opportunities for people in this community, not just here in downtown, but as far out as Fort Gordon uh, and the communities in those areas that we refer to as SOGO, south of Gordon Highway. Okay. Now, I know that there's a special spirit that I've read about about South Augusta. Can you tell mm -hmm. us about that? About there's a lot of people live in South Augusta. There's a lot of industry, a lot of places, the businesses out there. So can you talk about that for Absolutely. a minute? Absolutely. I think when you, again, look at the economy of Augusta historically, uh, Fort Gordon is in South Augusta. Uh, you look at uh, most of our major manufacturers, they're located in that corridor as well. One of the most strategic corridors that we have taken a very strong interest and a focus on is Gordon Highway. Mm -hmm. I think when you look at uh, what happens at Fort Gordon, the installation, uh, that being the heart of the cyber efforts for the Department of Defense, certainly from a, an Army standpoint. Mm -hmm. You've got the NSA facility that's there as well. And so when people leave Fort Gordon and travel into downtown, they're doing that by way of Gordon Highway. Right there in the center of our city geographically is Regency Mall there on Gordon Highway that was a major landmark. In fact, at the time that it was built and opened up, it was the largest mall in the southeastern United States and certainly the largest mall in the state of Georgia. Because of that uh, proximity to Fort Gordon, the sheer number of residents in Richmond County, i.e. Augusta, who live uh, on that side of Gordon Highway, we have to make new investments. For the last two decades, you've seen disinvestment. Businesses have left. Automobile dealers have left. Save two who are still there. And so we've got a unique opportunity to tie Augusta together. Uh, what I share with people is that Augusta is strong. Our economy is strong, but Augusta will never be her strongest until we address the issues of the blight, the vacant and abandoned strip malls, and the waste spa, uh, parking spaces that are there along Gordon Highway and Regency Mall until we begin addressing the issues of redevelopment and investment in that corridor. Okay. And, and on that point, what programs or policies, mm -hmm. what can the city do to try and help Regency Mall and those uh, businesses that have kind of left to become reinvestment? Well, I think it certainly requires both the public and the private sector to be engaged in transforming mm -hmm. what we know as, quote, Regency Mall. Uh, and it's not just Regency Mall, but it is Gordon Highway. You have to take a very comprehensive approach in terms of addressing uh, the whole corridor along Regency Mall. And so from a policy standpoint, there are some incentives that need to be provided in that area, whether it's a tax allocation district, whether it's a business improvement district. These are all tools in the economic development toolkit that we're going to make available in that corridor. Uh, but then the city has to do some things just from a practical ordinance standpoint. We're never going to get retail back as it once was back in the 80s mm -hmm. uh, and certainly the late 70s. That's not going to happen even in the 90s, early 90s where you had sheer numbers of retail opportunities there. That won't happen again, but what can happen is we can take our ordinances and make them fit to where there are adaptive reuse opportunities. Those are the things that we're championing in the mayor's office, uh, working with our commission, working with our planning and development department. Those are the things that would be necessary in order to jumpstart uh, new development in that area. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll be uh, right back. We need to take a break at this time. Fancy Pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even brought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? 
Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice, where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work, show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man, women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next. Find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice, where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. back with our very special guest today, Mayor Hardy Davis. Mayor Davis, I know that you have taken a, a very aggressive stance in doing uh, business development and small businesses. You've had town hall meetings, correct? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about those? We've had a number of town hall meetings. I think it was important when we took office in uh, 2015 uh, to engage the community. Uh, we were focused again on the economy and job creation. Uh, those were things that, from a platform standpoint, we said we were going to work on these issues. We also talked about public safety and law enforcement. We also talked about our schools. You can't have a great community unless those things are working hand in hand. I agree. My good friend Wellington Webb says that when you invite people over, clean the front room. <laughs> and the gateways to your city are clean streets, safe neighborhoods, mm -hmm. and those are the things that also become the bedrock for people to, you know, not only live in your city, but have the safe neighborhoods which then translate to the schools and where people want to live, work, play, and raise a family. And so we've done that. The business town halls, uh, we've had three of those. Uh, in fact, we've done one every year. And not only have we done one every year, but we've also engaged uh, the private sector community to talk about how people who, many times when you start a business, is that initial funding, that financing that you need to be able to pay your bills, to pay your employees. So we brought someone in from uh, the Atlanta area, Now Accounts. Uh, they've got a very unique system of where uh, they're able to provide that funding and they're able to leverage that. And so individuals and businesses were able to come and be a participant in the town hall setting that we had. Uh, again, each of those occasions, Fort Gordon was involved in it as well, all around wanting to create a strong entrepreneurial climate in the city of Augusta. Uh, people talk about entrepreneurs and the need for them in our city. And so we wanted to be at the forefront of leading those conversations. 
We've not only done that, but when you take a look at what's happening in South Augusta, we know that there have been some new investments there. Uh, Krispy Kreme open up, Chick-fil-A open up. These are things that the private sector has led the way on. And it's more of those types of investments that we're anticipating. Uh, very soon, we're going to see a new prompt care facility open up okay. in the very heart of South Augusta out on Highway 25 mm -hmm. uh, that will begin to affect what I've referred to as smart neighborhoods and smart growth. Uh, and that concept allows you to have a very nice neighborhood where you've got street lights, sidewalks, and those things that people look for in a community space. But when they win the, within a one to two mile radius, they've got access to good quality shopping, schools, and healthcare. Those are the intangibles that you need to really make communities thrive and grow. So we're seeing those things begin to happen, not just in South Augusta, but in other parts of Augusta as well, but certainly without question in an area that uh, has needed investments for a long time. Yeah, you know, I, I think that that's a great, uh, great concept because people don't realize Augusta is the second largest city mm -hmm. in the state. And it's not really looked at it that way, but there are a lot of businesses here. There is a lot of growth potential here. Well, it really is. You know, Georgia uh, has been identified as the number one state in which to do business by Site Selection Magazine and others. Our governor, he tops that. Uh, and so with Georgia being the number one place in the country in which to do business, uh, what I've told people is that I want Augusta to be the number one city mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia in which to do business. When you look at the number of investments over the last two years and six months that have been made in our city, uh, announcements that have been translated into ground being broken, uh, bricks and mortar being built, uh, and ultimately facilities standing up, we've been very fortunate. When you include the most recent groundbreaking with the Cyber Command Center uh, Innovation and Training Center, uh, that's downtown, $60 million investment, but then Starbucks, there only solubles plant in the world uh, here in Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. What started out as a $172 million investment, we just announced a couple of weeks ago, a $120 million expansion. So when you look at $780 million of investments prior to that announcement, we're, we're at this point, you've got almost $900 million worth of investments that are being made and announcements that have been made in the last two years and six months in our city things that we can all be extremely proud of, and this translates into jobs, this translates into opportunities. I've shared with folks, Dr. Garnett, that when we talk about Augusta, the second largest city, it's our students who, in many instances, when they graduate from high school and go to college, they matriculate away and they never come back. Mm -hmm. I've got a 15-year-old, he's a rising junior, and my goal as mayor has been to create a climate in our city where the 32,000 students, when they graduate, go off to college, they'll have a place to come back to called Augusta that has opportunities, real world opportunities for them to live, to learn, to work, and to raise their families. Well, that, that's, that's an excellent point. I know that um, Augusta does have opportunities, but it doesn't make us have the glamorous things. You know, people don't know about them. Sure. And, you know, one thing that uh, is very important is that when you have a major development that people don't realize that it's like throwing a rock into a pond mm -hmm. and you have all these other ripples effects that cause economic development around those things. Yeah, I think you're absolutely correct and that's a wonderful analogy. Uh, if you throw that rock into the pond or to the lake, uh, the ripple effect is how it cascades out. It's probably much better than saying a rising tide lifts all boats <laughs> because the boat has to be where the tide is being lifted. And so to that end, when you look at cyber and the announcements around mm -hmm. cybersecurity, cyber technology, you know, we're very fortunate in Augusta. Not only do we have the NSA facility at Fort Gordon, uh, one of four, I believe, in the, in the country, and then you couple that with Fort Gordon being named the Cyber Command Center of Excellence and the headquarters being stood up there, those jobs translate into not just the military, but also private sector mm -hmm. opportunities, whether that's the financial industry, whether that's the health information technology industry. These are the ripple effect opportunities mm -hmm. that happen just because the rock that was thrown was the rock called cyber. That's excellent. That's an excellent point that, um, 
in those areas, those are kind of almost like individual type of things where you can have be an entrepreneur with an mm -hmm. IT background yeah. where you can actually form your company and maybe contract mm -hmm. with Fort Gordon or another larger company to create the opportunities for you. You know, that's, that's that ab absolutely correct. When you think about uh, the fact that in today's economy, uh, historically, people think of jobs, particularly from a manufacturing standpoint, where you need, you know, 100, 200,000 square feet of space. Somewhere along the way, there's going to be a smokestack. You're going to need all of these utilities in order to be able to affect producing something. That's not the economy that we are. Uh, we are, again, an innovation and technology economy. And, you know, if we were talking from a scriptural standpoint, all you need is a rag and a rock. Right. <laughs> but in today's economy, all you need is a smartphone. Right. <laughs> and you can create millions mm -hmm. that then translate into billions of opportunities for people. You know, it's beyond the desktop computer. A small laptop, a smartphone, a smart device, you can create an app. You can then sell the app. That app then provides people with opportunities. It translates into jobs that are exponential in nature. That's the economy that we're quickly becoming. And so if we were to say, what's Augusta going to be? Augusta will be the cyber technology capital of the world. Okay. That is great. And we're looking forward to it. And uh, I know that you will do everything you can to make that a reality. We look forward to it. Okay. Thank Take you, Mayor, for being on, thank on you. here. It's my pleasure. Okay. okay. All right. I want to thank you for being with us today. We had a fantastic show. We had a great number of ideas and that were presented to you. And thank you for watching your Financial Solutions. Fancy Pants Peanut Butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm. Nice, where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mm, Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got? Or C, show solidarity? Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. <laughs> to Maddie. Congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home.
Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Chocolate Thank you for being with us today. I want to thank our guests for being with us. Please stay tuned for our next show. This is Ronald Garnett at Your Financial Solutions. Thank you for tuning in to our show today. We hope you, we gave you some information to help you with your financial solutions. Congrats on paying off all those student loans. Finally, right? How'd you manage that anyway? I started tracking my spending, changed a couple of habits. Wow. I'm kind of living paycheck to paycheck right now. <laughs> I don't even know how I'm doing it. Well, have you tried saving a little? <laughs> I want to, but where's that money going to come from? <laughs> Bill collectors, they're the worst. Am I right? When it comes to financial <laughs> stability, don't get left behind. Not home. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mm, Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same.